I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Acts, chapter 8, so let's focus on verses 26 through 31. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, and a high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. And he had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. And when Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, unless someone guides me. And so he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 31. Now, I've heard pastors teach that the Ethiopian eunuch was the first Gentile convert uh, because the man was from Ethiopia and because he had a powerful position in the kingdom. Well, then many believe that he must have been a Gentile. And that thought pattern disregards the stories of Joseph or Daniel or Moses or Esther and Nehemiah all of whom were Jewish people who held powerful positions in foreign governments. And I believe this Ethiopian was more likely a Jew. First, he had gone to Jerusalem to worship. Now, the fact that a Gentile would worship in Jerusalem was not totally uncommon. There was even a court of the Gentiles in the temple complex. But there are other factors to consider. This Ethiopian had a copy of the book of Isaiah with him, and he was reading it. And, you know, there's no such thing as a Borders bookstore or Amazon.com in Jesus' day. Torah scrolls were very rare, and they weren't given to just anyone. So consider Isaiah's prophecy in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 18. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will begat, and they will be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon, 2 Kings 20, verse 18. So most likely this Ethiopian was a descendant of dispersed Jews, and he had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover, and then probably stayed over those additional 50 days for what they call Shavuot, or Pentecost. And he would have likely been present when Jesus was crucified, and was probably nearby when the Holy Spirit fell. And leaving Jerusalem, he had stopped and was pondering the significance of Isaiah 53, which is titled in our Bibles, The Suffering Servant. You should read that entire chapter for yourself. Now, in addition to explaining that Isaiah was prophesying of Jesus in chapter 53, Philip no doubt continued reading in Isaiah, and he shared God's promises to foreigners and to eunuchs. In Isaiah 56, verse 3 through 5, listen to this. No foreigner who converted to the Lord should say, The Lord has excluded me from his people. And the eunuch should not say, Look, I'm a dried up tree. For the Lord says this, For the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and hold firmly to my covenant, I will give to them in my house and within my walls a memorial in a name better than sons and daughters. I will give each of them an everlasting name that will never be cut off. Now, whether this Ethiopian was Jewish or whether he was Gentile, he was certainly saved by faith in Jesus. Furthermore, he was immersed or baptized, and now his name is remembered in God's kingdom and in his word for all eternity. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.